Gracious Word presented by Church of Christ Hello viewers we welcome you all to this Gracious Word Bible study program through this program we are going to continuously meditate God's word and we are going to take a decision to follow the bible we pray for you all who are watching this program we pray for your family kindly send your prayer requests to us and you can send your comments about this program to us also dear viewers in our today's lesson we are going to see some important facts important information about the bible why bible is important you can read in john chapter 5 verse 39 as it says like this you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life and it is they that bear witness about me yes my beloved friends my beloved viewers lord jesus christ himself said that as we read and search the scriptures the bible we are going to find the way for eternal life and he also adds in this verse that the bible gives the witness about our lord jesus christ so we are going to study continuously some bible studies uh, on specific topics that will help us to learn the word of god yes my dear friends let us know what the bible is all about we should first know that the bible is written by 40 different men who lived in different places who had different culture and they wrote this bible over a period of 1600 years that is from 1500 bc before christ to 100 ad so the bible is written by 40 different authors in a period of 1600 years that is from 1500 bc to 100 ad and the most important thing is these men did not write what they thought but instead they were instructed by the holy spirit to write down what the holy spirit uttered them so the bible is a book not authored by men but it is from god let us read second peter chapter 1 verse 21 it says like this for prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit so it clearly says that the bible is inspired by word of god but just it was penned by the physical man another verse tells like this we can read that second uh, timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work the bible helps the man to be thoroughly equipped for every good work we should know that the bible reveals the truth that the god wants the mankind to know and it's so important that we should not stay change the content or our doctrine of the bible we can read like this in deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 you shall not add to the word which i command you nor take anything from it that you may keep the commandments of the lord your god which i command you now let us have a look at what the bible is having as the content of the bible as we all know the bible is divided into two parts major parts the old testament and the new testament the old testament has 39 books in it so the bible is a book of books you should know that the bible is a book of books it's not a single book so the old testament contains 39 books and the new testament contains 27 books this is the content of the bible so all together the bible contains 66 inspired books which is authored by god so men wrote it but it is inspired and authored by god that we should know the old testament books were written from 1500 bc listen the old testament books were written from 1500 bc to 400 bc so this is the period of the writings of the old testament it it was written from 1500 bc to 400 bc and they are further divided into four main parts 
you can say that is a five main points because the prophetic books are subdivided into major prophets and minor prophets we will take it as prophets so the old testament books are divided into four major parts the 39 books are divided into four major parts the first part contains five books and they are called the books of law and they are written by moses the first of these describe the creation of the world that is genesis the first book of the bible describes the creation of the world and provides a summary of important events that happened in 2000 years of history so the first book itself genesis itself in the bible it tells us about a history over a period of 2000 years of uh, man's existence including the worldwide flood which destroyed all the mankind except the eight people the noah's family you should know after the flood man again rebelled against god and god chose a special man named abraham who was so just in the sight of god so through abraham he promised that his descendants through him the world will be blessed and uh, through him jesus christ came and we are all blessed by jesus christ by getting the remission of sins so this is the content of the bible old testament books they are divided into four parts the first part contains of books of law it was penned it was written by moses the first five books were written by moses we should know that dear friends as the book of genesis it closes the second book of the bible is exodus we can see in that god's people are becoming slaves in egypt so the book of exodus tells us that how they were delivered from the egyptian slavery and then how god dealt with them giving them laws and they he has given them commandments to follow so the book of exodus the book of leviticus the book of numbers and the book of deuteronomy these five books are law books uh, but the genesis itself carries about 2000 years of history and then the israelites became slaves in egypt when they were uh, delivered from egypt god given them laws to follow and the commandments to follow and how they should worship him and how they should live these all things are written in the other four law books that is exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy the second part is from joshua to esther these books contain 1000 years of history genesis alone carries 2000 years of history then the israelites become uh, slaves in egypt they were delivered through moses by god and god gave them laws and commandments to follow these are all written in exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and then we are seeing from joshua to esther these books they carry a period of 1000 year about israel it records the history during this next 1000 years what have happened and how god dwelt with them how he gave them judges how he gave them kings to lead them it's all described in the book of joshua to esther the next uh, coming third part the books five books are called the books of Uh, songs are the books of wisdom they are job psalms proverbs ecclesiastes and songs of solomon so these books are called the wisdom literature and these are poetic in nature and they also contain songs drama and proverbs coming to the final part the fourth part or we can say four and fifth part uh, they are called prophets we can split it uh, into or subdivide into major prophets and minor prophets major prophets are five books and minor prophets are 12 books so the old testament 39 books are divided into 5 12 5 5 12 you can remember like this five law books 12 books of history then five books of songs or poetry then five books of major prophets the last part of the old testament are 12 books they are minor prophets so these Uh, final part uh, five and twelve. They are seventeen in total. Are written by the prophets who lived in this thousand years of history. That is from uh, Joshua to Esther. 
So that time these prophets lived and they instructed God's instruction to the mankind and helped them to be in alignment with God. So coming to the New Testament, the New Testament books are 27 in numbers and let us split that also into 5 parts or 4 parts you can take it like that. The New Testament focuses our attention on Jesus. So the fully, the whole of New Testament focuses our attention on Jesus who came to redeem the mankind from the bondage of sin. So that is the main message of Bible. From the uh, book of Genesis to Revelation, the main message of Bible is God's plan of redeeming mankind from the bondage of sin and that too through his only begotten son Jesus Christ. So the New Testament focuses on Jesus Christ. So the four books, first four books are called gospel books. It's not gospels, only one gospel written in four books. So they are called gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It tells us about the account of the virgin birth of Jesus, his teachings, his death, his burial and his resurrection. So all these incidents are written in this gospel books, four books. That is the first part of New Testament. So 27 books in the New Testament divided into four or five parts. The first part contains four books. They are called gospel books. The second part contains the church history. The book of Acts tells us about how Jesus built his church and how people came in uh, after being saved. So this is the church history book called Acts. That is the second part, only one book. And the third part contains 21 books. And these are Romans to Jude that explain the Christian system including how we are to worship and serve God and it also tells about how a Christian should live, a God's man or woman should live. So that is covered in Romans through Jude. They can be subdivided into general epistles and church epistles. So these 21 books tells us how we should live in this world. This is the content of this 21 books. And the final book is the revelation book. It is also a prophetic book. It tells us what is the benefit of being a Christian? What is the reward we are going to get as a Christian? Or what is the condemnation we are going to face if we are not living as a Christian or a people according to God's law? So this is the uh, division of Bible. The whole testament, 39 books is divided into 5 major parts. Law books, history books, then poetry books, then major prophets and minor prophets. 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. The New Testament 27 books are divided into 5 major parts or you can take it as 4. The first part contains 4 gospel books. The second part is church history. The third part is 21 epistles. It can be divided into church epistles and general epistles. And the fourth part is the prophetic book, Revelation. Thank you for your patient listening. We are going to see many more Bible study the materials in the upcoming programs. Stay tuned with us in the same time, same day, every week. We once again greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are praying for you all. Kindly send your prayer requests to the address given here or the phone number given here. Thank you once again. God bless you. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine, and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsradi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214421. Hello viewers, we welcome you to this Voice of Truth program. We encourage you to join with us for an in-depth Bible study. Our today's lesson will be delivered by Brother Jerry Bates of World Evangelism, also the Associate Editor of the Voice of Truth International Magazine. Come, let us hear the word of God. Hello, it's good to be able to be here with you again, and I appreciate you tuning in to this program so we might learn more about the Word of God. For just a few moments, I want to discuss a few verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, particularly verses 16 and 17. Notice those verses say, 
Do you not know that the, you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and whose temple you are. Now notice here it said that God will destroy anyone who defiles his temple. And the reason is very simple, because God's temple is holy. Now when we think about the temple, of course, we are thinking about the Old Testament temple. And if you know anything of the Old Testament, you know that the temple of the Old Testament was a very holy and respected building. God gave very specific instructions about how the temple was to be built. He gave specific instruction about what could go into the temple and even who could go into the temple and how they were to go into the temple. For instance, before the priest could enter the temple to offer the sacrifices, they had to be washed with water. They had to be holy. The only way to be holy was to be ceremonially washed with water, and that made them ceremonially pure. And so then they could enter the temple. Until they were pure or holy, they could not enter the temple. Now notice these verses say that we as Christians, as members of Christ's body, the church, we are also part of God's temple. No, this is not a physical building. And many people think that we don't have a temple today since we don't have a physical building. But we do. It's just not physical. It is a spiritual temple. Our temple is spiritual. That means that we are the temple of God. But since we are the temple of God, we are also holy. Now, how are we going to become holy? We cannot become holy by ourselves. We cannot become holy by simply living such a good life that we don't have any sin. Because we can never live a life without sin. We become holy by being washed with the blood of Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians. In Acts 22 and verse 16, when Ananias came to him after he had been struck by blindness on the road to Damascus, Ananias told him, And now why tarriest thou? Or what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Notice Ananias told Paul to wash away your sins. He was to wash away his sins by being baptized with water. But when we're baptized with water, we are also contacting the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 6 tells us that we're baptized into the death of Christ. It's the death of Christ where his blood was shed. So when we're baptized, we're baptized into his death, which means we contact the blood of Christ. And the blood of Christ then washes away our sins. That makes us holy. That makes us able to enter the temple of God. But we need to be careful how we continue to build with the temple of God. Remember, we are holy. The temple is holy. Therefore, God warns us that if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Now, we're reminded about some of the instances of the Old Testament when someone defiled the temple of God. Think about particularly Nadab and Abihu. You remember on one occasion, Nadab and Abihu were the legitimate priests. They were authorized by God to offer sacrifices. So they went to the temple one day. They went there to offer sacrifices. They did everything just exactly what God said except for one thing. They brought strange fire into the temple. When they burned the offering, they used fire from a different source than what God had authorized. And you can remember, of course, that God destroyed them. God burned up Nadab and Bayou. Now, I think that tells us something about how God thinks about his temple. God's temple is so holy. When he says he will destroy anyone, he's not kidding. He's going to destroy anyone who defiles the temple of God. Now, how are we going to defile the temple of God? Well, if the temple is not physical, then you don't have to worry about entering a building in the wrong way or anything like that. 
but we can defile the temple of God in a spiritual sense. And that's what we need to be careful about. You see, we can defile the temple of God by defiling it with division. Earlier in this book, 1 Corinthians, even earlier it's this chapter, Paul talked about division that was there in the church in Corinth. That must have been shocking to these people to think that Paul is now charging them with defiling the temple of God. But we can, when we are, divide the temple, when we would divide the one body with division, then we are defiling the temple of God. We can also defile the temple of God by immorality. In chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Paul talks about this in, from an individual standpoint. He said, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. There he's talking about we, being, we as individuals being the temple of God. And he said we can defile the temple of God in this particular context by immorality, by not living holy lives. We must live lives of purity. Live lives of holiness. To be holy means to be set apart. We must use our lives in service to God. So we can defile the church by immorality. We defile the church by division. We can also defile the church by substituting man's will for the will of God. Later on, Paul used a term like wood, hay, or stubble to describe it. When we take the church of God, the church with Christ built, and we put other things in it, such as man's devices, man's divisions, man's doctrine, man's beliefs, then we are defiling the temple of God. Because we're bringing something into the temple that was not authorized by God. Just as anything that brought was brought into the Old Testament physical temple that was not authorized by God would result in defiling that temple. So when we bring anything into the spiritual temple today that has not been authorized by God, then we are defiling the temple of God. So anyone who brings into the church any practice or service that has not been authorized by God defiles the temple of God. Now, if we do that, if we're guilty of that, what's going to happen? Paul says God will destroy us. No, that doesn't necessarily mean God is going to strike us down dead like he did Nadab and Abihu. But we can rest assured that judgment is coming. We can rest assured God is not going to reward any of us who are guilty of defiling the temple of God. God will destroy us. God promised to destroy anyone who defiles his temple. And the reason is really very simple. Because God's temple is holy. God will cannot bear any fellowship with evil. If we defile the temple of God, if we bring impure things into the church, the temple of God, we can rest assured God will destroy us. So this should be a great warning to each one of us. That as we live as Christians, we respect the church, which is the temple of God. We respect the church to such extent that we would not want to do anything that not defile it, to bring sin into it, or to disrupt our fellowship with the great and holy God. May we always be mindful of the relationship of us and the temple of God so that we remain holy. We live holy lives. And we keep the church holy. I hope that each one of us will think about this in a very serious manner. So that as we live our lives, we'll always strive to keep the temple of God holy. Thank you. We welcome you to this Voice of Truth study series. We are studying why we believe and what we believe. Today our topic would be why we are Christians only. When we became believers in Christ and we obeyed his teachings, that made us Christians and Christians only. There is no suffix, there is no prefix to it. We are just 
Christians only. Salvation is in the name of Christ. We read it in Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Point number one. We are Christians only because of what Bible teaches. When we became believers in Christ, He saves us and adds us to His church and therefore we belong to Him and we are His name to denote His ownership. We read in Acts chapter 2 verse 47 and the Lord added those daily such as should be saved. Point number 2. We are Christians only because it is so mentioned in the Bible. The word Christian appears three times in the New Testament. In Acts chapter 11 verse 26 and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. In Acts chapter 26 verse 28 then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuade me to be a Christian. And also we read in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So we can see there was no suffix or prefix to it. They were called just Christians. Point number three. We are Christians only because we follow only Christ. When a Christian, we were invited by Christ to follow Him. Christ is our Lord and Master. We are invited to follow Christ and not only just to follow Christ, we are called to be like Christ. That is, whatever we do, it should be in the name of Christ. We read in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Point number 4 We are Christians only because we are member of His family, the church. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. We read so in Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. We welcome you to be part of his family, the church. No suffix, no prefix. We are just Christians only as Bible defines and as Bible calls. Thank you for your patient listening. Goodbye till we meet again. May God bless you. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth and you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsradi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420. 9244214421 God bless you The Church of Christ salutes you Joy Creative Production For video coverage and editing audio recording and editing promo for advertisement graphic design contact 9042494996